Welcome, you're on the air. I am on the air? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, please, uh, I last night I called you before I finished my answer, and uh, your show was ended. You cut me off about uh, Prophet Muhammad married Aisha. Okay, go ahead. So she, was, she was nine years old, that's right. And I told you that, that God created a woman when she sees a monthly period, that means she is ready to be married. Okay. You know, what, what, what is the reason behind this one? Because the God wants us to protect our child, our daughter, from adultery. You know, between 10 and 18, it is like nine years or eight years more, our daughters in middle school and high school, they commit adultery every day. Okay, this thank you. Thank you for your point. Now, now uh, I understand what you're saying. Do you have a question or a specific point you want to bring in relation to what you've just said? Ma ma what I, uh, I want to tell you why we, our the God said, you can marry your daughter to someone at that age, which he with the God, create the girl and said, she is ready now. Okay, okay, Abdul, that? Abdul, thank you. Uh, you know, it's very interesting yeah, because... Have, I have another comment also, please. If okay, you can, uh, we, we heard your point. Uh, let, let us respond, then go to your next point. You know, it's very interesting okay. that in Islam you have the hijab and you have to cover up your women, and I never have understood that. Does that mean that Muslim men are unable to deal with the temptation? You know, in Christianity, we believe that if uh, young people are born again, if they have the Holy Spirit of God inside of them, if they've truly become Christians, then they can be able to resist the temptation. And so we don't have to put uh, false coverings over women. I mean, surely they should dress modestly, but to cover them up because we're afraid that we'd be tempted, uh, it doesn't work. And this idea that we should marry the girls young so they don't fornicate, which I think is what you were trying to say, so they don't have sex before marriage, uh, why can't you just teach the, do the young girls and teach the men that you don't do that until marriage and you have the power of God inside of you and His Word to keep you from sin? Uh, this is the view in Christianity. Uh, why can't this work in Islam? Okay. If, if that is possible, that is good, no problem. We said it is allowed to be married it is not necessary to be married if it is possible to protect your daughter from adultery that's okay no bad but the problem is our daughters committing adultery every day at middle school now in the united states you know that one in middle school and high school all of them under the name of boyfriend and girlfriend you know every day they're committing the uh, fornication uh, fornication yeah, Zena. Yeah, yeah. That, that is one uh, of my uh, one point. The okay. Other okay. Point Before is, you get to your next point, Abdullah, point. hold on. Yeah. yeah. But David wants to make a comment, and I want to address it too. Before you move on, we, we appreciate points, but still, David wants something to say. He's been waiting. So go ahead, Brother David. Yes. Uh, our friend pointed out that uh, when a girl gets her first period, this is God's sign that she's ready for, I guess, childbirth. And I'm afraid this is simply absolutely false. It's, it's medically false. Uh, it's just not true. Um, and I'll offer a few responses. First, uh, Aisha hadn't reached puberty when Muhammad exactly. began to have sex with her. And so if you're saying that God gives the sign of uh, menses, God gives the sign of puberty as the appropriate time when men are first allowed to have sex with a woman, then according to you, Muhammad was a horrible sinner because he didn't wait for this time. Exactly. Second, the Quran, according to you, cannot be from God because according to you, God only allows men to have sex with women after they've reached puberty, but the Quran in Surah 65.4 allows men to have sex with women before they've reached puberty. So the, uh, the Quran cannot be from God since you've uh, got uh, conflicting positions there. Uh, and, and finally, I'll, I'll explain why. I said this yesterday. Uh, when a girl gets her first period, this is not a sign that she is ready to give childbirth. Find me a non-Muslim doctor who will say that. 
What doctors say is that puberty, that when a girl gets her first period, this is the beginning of puberty. It's, it's not a sign that she's ready to give birth. It's a sign that a change has begun in her body, which several years down the road will allow her to give birth. Yeah. It's puberty is a process that takes several years. And when a girl first gets her period, that's a sign that puberty has begun. It's not a sign, aha, let's go in and have sex with her so we can get her pregnant. Why? Because girls who are uh, young, and haven't finished the process of puberty are not ready to give childbirth. Their, 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 their hips and their birth canals have not widened. That takes a process of several years. If it hasn't widened, this is why you have girls dying in the Middle East and in Northern Africa and everywhere Islam has spread because people are people believe just like you believe. You're telling, you're telling these people around the world, if your daughter's nine years old, go ahead and marry her off, start having sex, and then these girls die because of this false, immoral teaching. And so I would just advise you, look at the facts, not, not the facts from your Quran, not the facts from your Hadith, look at the medical facts, and when you see what's really good for a young girl, you will see that it's not good for her to become pregnant, and therefore you, you should reject uh, what you're claiming, and you should reject Muhammad as a prophet. Okay, Abdul, just let Sam yeah. say one thing, and then we're going to give it back to you. Yeah, Quickly, uh, Sam. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry that we're bombarding you, but uh, David Wood said that Aisha hadn't reached puberty, and that the Quran doesn't sanction someone reaching puberty or having monthly cycles in order for you to marry, marry them. Let me give you the hadiths that prove what David Wood said concerning Aisha. And I'm going to add a point real quick, because we got a lot of calls, and you know, we, okay. I, it's not we were trying to get rid of you, but listen to this. Okay, let me read Sahih Muslim, number 3311. Pay attention here, that when Muhammad married her, married Aisha, and consummated through sexual intercourse, Aisha had her dolls with her. Sahih Muslim, number 3311. Aisha reported that Allah's apostle married her when she was seven years old, and she was taken to his house as a bride when she was nine. Her dolls were with her. So she took her dolls with Muhammad to his house when she was nine, and the prophet died when she was 18 years old. So he consummated the marriage and she was still playing with dolls. Now, Sahil Bukhari, volume 8, number 151. Sahil Bukhari, volume 8, number 151. Dr. Muhammad Muskhan Khan, in his translation of this hadith, inserts the comments of Ibn Hajar al Askalani. Ibn Hajar wrote a commentary on Bukhari. Let me read what he says here. Narrated Aisha. I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the Prophet, and my girlfriends also used to play with me. When Allah's apostle used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves. But the Prophet would call them to join and play with me. Now, in parentheses, Muskhan Khan provides the comments of Ibn Hajr. Ibn Hajr, the one who wrote an explanation of Bukhari. The playing with the dolls and similar images is forbidden. You cannot play with images. But it was allowed for Aisha at that time, as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. So according to the Hadith and Ibn Hajar, Aisha, when Muhammad slept with her as his wife, was still playing with dolls, something forbidden for grown-ups, but allowed for young girls who haven't reached puberty. So by your claim, you just condemned Muhammad. And you're still left with the problem, why would a 54-year-old marry a 9-year-old? Let's say you're right, your argument makes sense, we can't refute you. You don't marry a 9-year-old to a 54-year-old who's old enough to be her grandfather. 